I'm so sorry, Lisa. My power just went out. That was weird. Yeah. Um, that does not surprise me because we have these experiences every time we try to do something meaningful. You, always happens to you and I every time. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that I can string that one and this one together. Okay. So should I just pick, kind of pick up where I was? Yeah. yeah just pick up where you were and we'll, okay. if I can't figure out how to do it, I'm sure you can figure out how to do it. So we were yeah, on we'll, feedback. Go for it. We'll figure it out. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So basically what you're doing is you're teaching your left hand hemisphere of your, of your brain to visualize the desired result and then you're going to recognize those feelings associated with the right hemisphere access to the pleasure and pain areas in the manner that you're that is needed to produce that desired result. So let me give you kind of that sounds like all hokey mumbo jumbo. So let me kind of give you an idea. So let's say that you had a left leg injury. This is one of the things they talk about. So let's say that you have a left leg injury and you want to increase blood flow to that left leg so that it would heal quicker. You would then access your left brain consciousness. Imagine that blood flow increasing to the area that you need it to go through. And then once your body responds to that, you will then be able to access your right hand, your, your right hemisphere brain, which is going to be the feeling state, right? So that was uh-huh. the emotional state, how it feels in your body. Your, and then you can actually measure that like with an, a thermometer, for example, because if you really truly are sending more blood to that side of your leg, then the temperature will increase. Right. So that's why. So this is kind of like an on-demand, like a on-demand consciousness mode that you can teach your body to do. I'm not positive, but I do believe, I think this is the way Joe Dispenza does his trainings, I believe. Okay. But okay. But those are essentially the three that they compared to HemiSync um, or, you know, what we would consider the gateway experience. Well, one more thing about biofeedback before we leave that, I just want sure. to reference this particular sentence in that section. And uh, it spoke to me because I, I have dealt with a lot of physical ailment, so to speak. I am in the process of getting better. And I'm always going to say that. But yep. there's, there's a there's a statement that says, in this way, pain can be blocked, healing can be enhanced, malignant tumors can apparently be suppressed and ultimately destroyed. The body's pleasure centers can be stimulated and a variety of specific physiological results may be achieved. So that little sentence right there is monu-freaking mental. Mental, yep. Hashtag mm-hmm. epigenetics, right? Ha- yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag throw your doctor in the trash. Unless no, you're, right? You know, I mean, not yeah. that we don't need them for some things, but uh, that part right there, I was like, holy crap. You mean to tell me I can use one side of my brain and then access the other side of my brain and then I can make my body feel better. I can shrink a malignant tumor. This is information everyone should have. This is something that should be taught. And by the way, let's just, let's point out the fact that the U S military knew this back in 1988 for the record. Yes. And that's something that, that makes me just my head spin off my shoulders almost because it's like, you sons of bitches know this. Yes. You yes. know that we have the ability to heal ourselves. You know that we do not have to suffer and we do not have to be sick. And the way that they, the only way you hear anything about this is through religious context and a religious filter. And without, it's it's like that's, they bury the truth or they bury, yeah, they bury the truth and, or they bury the lie in truth. They wrap it up. Like you put your pill for your dog and a piece of, you know, lunch meat Peas or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they know this, just like you said, they know this, they have been knowing this for a very long time, but they failed to tell us this. So it's time that we take back our earth experience and we make it, we make it our business to learn everything that has been kept from us. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and I, and I say that in true love for all of the people who I know who suffer like I do, I love you and I want you to be free. 
And if you're so busy worried about being sick and suffering or someone else you know being sick and suffering, it takes away from all the expansion and growth that you could be doing and all the joy that's available during our earth experience. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that I 100% agree with that. It's, it's absolutely, um, it's mind blowing to me that the quote unquote powers that were, I'm going to call them were, um, yes. the powers that were don't want you to have access to this information to the point where they felt like this was something they needed to suppress. Um, and they can't push their agendas when you are a free and sovereign being who knows how to utilize this DNA skin suit technology that you are in. These bodies Uh-oh. did not come with a manual. Boo, you know? Yes, 100% yes. I love the DNA skin suit technology. That's exactly what it is. And if you just kind of pull yourself away from from being so connected to your body and thinking your body is what you are, then it's yeah. it's easy to to it's easy to accept that she called it a DNA skin suit technology or whatever. I already forgot what you called it, but you know. Yeah, what I mean. that's what I called it. <laughs> DNA skin suit technology. Okay. It's easy to accept that once you've worked a little while on separating yourself and realizing that I am not my body. My body is a, it is a skin suit. There is a little sliver of, of source inside the skin suit. And I'm having an experience in this. It's no different than getting in your car and driving your car somewhere. You would never say I am my car. You would say that is my car that drives me that I get places in. Same thing with your body. And it, yep. it's the same as like, you know how to drive the car, but if it breaks down, you don't know how to fix it. It's, it's well, and here's the interesting thing I want to point out, which it goes back to your point that you are not your skin suit. You know, you're not your body. When you get out of your car, you're still the same person. Right. So your soul, when it's out okay. of this body, you're still that consciousness. You are that identity. So all these, I just want to state for the record. I know there's a lot of people that are like, we're all one and we're all quantum entangled. That's fantastic. But that's not the point down here. I, I'm, maybe you will disagree with me. No, but that's I agree. Not the point, that's not the point down here. I the know that we're all have, one. The point is to have an individual experience. We were all one before boom. we came here. Yes, boom. <laughs> and you know what? Your role here on this planet, in my opinion, is to determine whether or not you want to be a service to self or service to others being. Yes. And yes. And everybody who's listening, if you're listening, you probably already know this. That is from the law of one. That's how the law of one describes uh, a lot of um, a lot of other things. They use things like dark and light, good and evil. The law of one stops short of using any of those dogmatic terms. And they just say, yeah. Either your surface to self, meaning you care more. I mean, it's right in the words, you know, either your service to self or you would, or you care more about others. It's not that you don't love yourself, but you also love others. Yeah. So either you're a selfish prick, you know, or you kind of, you kind of sort of care about other people, what happens to other people as well. Your your fellow humans here are either resources for you to utilize. Oh yes. Or, or your, or they are, you know, we're all the best thing that we could do in for a service to others kind of uh, perspective is what's good for the whole is what's good for us. Yes. You know? Yes. So, so Um, I go back to agreeing with you. Yes. And I go back to agreeing with you that yes, ultimately we're all one, but why do you think we were split up into all these individual parts so that we could have the individual experiences in order to upload all of this experience back to the cloud is just what I call it, or the Akash. Yeah, yeah. The, the Akash, Absolutely. the cloud. Yep. Okay, the Lamb's Book The morphogenetic book of, field, right? Yes. It's or, about it. Yeah. In Christianity, it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, right. Basically, yep. it's, but it's all the same. Every religion has a name for it, but it's, it's the cloud. Everything gets, everything we do, it's just like everything you do on your phone. You know, if you have it set to sync, it, it all goes up to the cloud. And that's yep. what happens with everything we feel, see, think, experience. It all gets uploaded. So I agree with you 100%, Becca, that yes, we're one. See, that's, yes, we're one, but yes, we're having individual experiences. And that takes me to where it is important to to open, crack open your brain and remember that you can have two dual, sometimes conflicting pieces of information and they can both be true. Both be true. Yep. 
boom. Yes. You and, can hold two very different paradoxes, you know, within your body. Yes. And they, yeah, at the same time. And, and that true. is to me a description of the difference between being like a binary being versus a quantum being where one and zero can both be true at the same time. Yes. Supercomputers. We're supercomputers, you know? And, yes. And actually this paper, uh, I should have highlighted it, but in this paper that we're going over, he actually calls our brains computers. And wow. our, our, our brains are many computers. And again, I'm going to go back to encourage you to pull yourself out a little bit from this physical body and pull yourself, you pull up your consciousness, just even if you can only get it slightly above your head to go, okay, I, I am not my body. I am energy. You know, I am consciousness so that you can accept these concepts that it, it's saying your brain is a mini computer does not take away from your humanity. It doesn't take away from your uh, your beliefs as far as uh, there being a God or a prime source. It doesn't undo that. It To me, it enhances that. It's yeah. like, it doesn't take away, it doesn't make me think that there's no, um, again, there's no higher power. It just makes me go, holy crap, whoever designed us was smart as shit and like thought about everything. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> you know? right. You know, he, th there was a plan for everything. And this, this just reinforces that. So I, and I had that discussion with someone else who basically said, uh, so what you're saying is you're an atheist and you're saying that there is no God. And I'm like, I literally didn't say any of that. <laughs> Right, right. I'm not saying that. I, I, and, I, and when I say God, you're going to hear that word, however you're programmed to hear it. But what I mean by it is some source is really all I mean. And do you want to call that source code? Maybe you could. That's up to you. So yep. that's yep. what I mean by that when I say, I don't mean I, nothing that I say should imply any religious because I, I don't mean it that way. But I know I know what those terms <laughs> trigger. I know the thoughts and emotions they trigger in certain people. Right. So and actually the dual, the two so-called conflicting ideas that goes back to the hemisync. This yep. goes back to taking the two sides and make making them both active and work together. So yes. it goes back to the same. It goes right back to this paper. Yep. You know, and that, that kind of like brings me back to, um, you know, where we were at with the hemisync too, is just the fact that if you can move your consciousness outside of your physical sphere and realm of knowing, you can access intuitive knowledge that's higher dimensional, higher frequency information. But if you are um, I guess limited on your perspective for, I guess, a belief, right? We talked about beliefs earlier today, but <laughs> yes, you know, when you have a belief that you cannot do this or that this is all mumbo jumbo bogus, um, and then you try to access higher realms of knowledge, you know, if your brain is in conflict, you're not going to be able to access them. Um, your state of consciousness needs to be in a place where it's restricting judgment of the information that's coming in. You're just allowing hmm. it to come in. And you know, Becca, I, and I want to further to what you said, there's actually a sentence uh, in section five of the paper. He says, okay. the participant then gains access to the various levels of intuitive knowledge, which the universe offers. Holy universe. Who yep. would not want that? And I, okay, talking about that, about um, not judging the information that's coming in, that has been, um, some, that is something that I'm working on when I go into these deeper states and I start to access the information. Um, the, the, the logical side of my brain starts to go, what the crap are you saying? That is not possible. How can that right. possibly be? And it, and so I have to practice shutting that off because it will affect my ability to draw down information because I'm judging it as it comes through. So that's because such a you're, 
point. Because you're engaging it with your left brain, right? You're the left hemisphere of your brain, right? And that's the, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna mess you up because you don't believe in it. Yes. And it's like the information is coming through me and I know where I'm pulling it from. And even I have a hard time believing what I am down and I'm going to call it downloading for, for anyone who hasn't talked to me when I say like, I got information out of the, from the universe, basically, I call it downloading. So uh, I'm just going to say I download information. So that's what I mean when I use that term. So when I download information, I'll get it and it will resonate in my body. It will give me that feeling of this is wholly true. My body will attest to it being true. But then that other part of my brain's like, no, hell no, that cannot possibly be true. There is no way that that's that that that's possible. But it is. (laughs) It's it's, I'm I'm limiting what truth can be. Yep. And, you know, we we can't do that. Now, if you if we can move to section six, if you because you spoke on this earlier to me, and you did such a beautiful job of explaining the lamp versus the laser. Yeah, sure. Okay. 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 So here's an interesting thing that they did with these um, specific and I believe they did this with all four correct me if I'm wrong, but they measured the output of the energy of the brain because your brain, I mean, if you think about how, how do they take an EEG? Well, it's electro and cardiogram or something like that. Right. So it's electrical impulses coming off of your brain. Electroencephalogram, but go ahead. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So your brain actually outputs energy and so they can actually measure this energy that's coming out of your brain so your brain is basically like a lamp or i want to say a light bulb um your brain is basically like a, a light bulb or a lamp and it's sending out heat and light but most of us because our brains are not coherent it's in a very chaotic incoherent way which is extremely diffused energy now what they realized is that after these these subjects performed this hemisync um you know the gateway experience with hemisync and got their brains in sync it was like a laser beam and it produced a disciplined stream of light so what they what they say is that you can focus train and gain coherence in your brain. And then it begins to resonate at increased vibrational levels. And when you're, um, when you increase the frequency of your brain, it allows your brain to connect with more sophisticated and rare energetic levels in the universe, in the ether. Yes. Yes. So for those of us who do practice things like meditation or hemisync or whatever it is that we want to practice, or we talk about, you know, in the, in the, I, I quote unquote new age, which I hate saying that, but like the uh-huh. spiritual community or whatever, cause they're, that's a loaded thing. That's new age right. is pretty much like Christianity to me at this point, but we have to, whatever. yeah, we got to find better words and I don't know what they we are. Do. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what they are either, but <laughs> yeah. So, so what, you know, what they're, you in these new age communities, they talk all the time about raising your frequency, raise your vibration. Um, And I think a lot of people don't really fully understand what that even means, but when they're saying it, but this is exactly specifically what they're saying. The more you, if you are resonating at a higher frequency, you are able to access higher dimensional wisdom, higher energetic wisdom, I guess. And that's what it says. And there's this, there's a quote again, I'm going to quote this guys, just for reference, I am a much more abstract thinker and Becca is, is very more, uh, what's the logical. word you're very, linear. yes, yeah. linear yeah. logical. So she does a great job with those things. I'm more of like, I, my head's in the clouds. That's just how, so we make a good team and that she does a really good job explaining the, the details of the minutia. Um, there is a sentence in here that, blows my mind and this is in section six uh, six under lamp versus labor uh, laser and he says the stream of energy is projected with total coherence of both frequency and amplitude such that the surface area of a laser beam contains billions of times the concentrated energy found at a similar surface area on the sun that's right, right. i forgot Dude. about that 
Dude, and let me go back to what you were talking about, how your brain uh, generates this light. It generates a frequency. Okay. People say all the time, like, oh, I think Facebook is listening to my conversations or Facebook is spying on me. And you think that Facebook knows that you're interested in um, swing sets because you talked about being interested in swing sets. And that's possible. But I have had three that I can think of off the top of my head experiences where Facebook advertised things to me that I only thought about. Yes. And, and I have said to people there, I know, and that's before I read this, but I know that your brain emits an electromagnetic frequency. And I know that if I can use a remote to turn my TV on and off and send that signal from one, one physical thing to another physical thing, that means my brain can, they can pick up, uh, remotely pick up these EMFs also. If my TV can pick up an EMF and it's old technology, Come on. So I think that having these routers in our houses, these towers outside of our houses, they are able to collect the EMFs from your thoughts and interpret them. So here's an interesting and we, you know, we don't need to go there now, but I just want to drop this because we may want to do a whole entire podcast about this eventually. But I have studied in depth because I'm such a nerd and I get all down in the details. Uh Um, But I have actually studied in depth how our biology is completely interrelated with electromagnetism because think about, I mean, being an electrical engineer, um, I know how EMFs work. Mm -hmm. I I know how electrons work. So Mm -hmm. when I studied the biology portion of it, I realized DNA is a universal language. It's the blueprint for all life. It's our code. And essentially gene expression can be turned on and off with electromagnetic frequencies. Period. One million percent. And that's why people get fussy about things like 5G and those Gen- sorts genetically of- modified foods and yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, because we don't- all these things are interrelated. All a hundred percent. And they're and they're they are all basically um, it's like if you wanted to if you wanted to tear down a computer like a supercomputer. You would install virus after virus, and then you would do things to it physically. And so, um, it's it's it, it is an it's it's an attempt to sort of you know tear down uh, the supercomputer that is the human body. I mean, let's let's call it what it is. There is a war going on, and it's a war over consciousness. Period. Yes, because our consciousness is so powerful, and by the time we get through this, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it is, it, we, it goes back to utilizing the lamp versus the laser. So either we're spraying like a, like a sprinkler outside, just spraying thoughts and EMFs all over the place with our brain, or we bring it into laser focus. And that's what this system is, is meant to do is to teach you how to bring it into a laser focus so that you can, it says that, Again, I'm going to read directly from the paper. The mind, when operating at these increasingly rarefied levels, is assumed to be capable of processing the information thus received through the same fundamental matrix by which it makes sense of ordinary physical sensory input to achieve meaning in a cognitive text. Such meaning is usually perceived visually in the form of symbols, but may also be perceived as astonishing flashes of holistic intuition or even in the form of scenarios involving both visual and oral perception. That takes me back to tattoos. (laughs) Okay. 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 People get tattoos all the time and they get symbols tattooed on their body. And they think that, oh, I just think that the triquetra, I just think it's cute. No, (laughs) no, honey. That's not why you have a triquetra tattooed on your body. That's, that's the, the right brain or whichever is the logical side. Um, That's the explanation, the logical explanation, but honey, that ain't why you like that symbol. Okay. That's an intuitive hit. That is a signal, that's a symbol, that's a code, that's something trying to get your attention, to get you to focus on it 
in order to grow from it. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's an important point to talk about because I think a lot of people that are, that, you know, listening to our podcast probably know about QAnon and that kind of thing too. And they always say symbolic symbols will be their downfall. Why do you think that is? It's because those symbols are being, you know, uh, manipulated and sent directly into our right brain where it's being embedded and lodged in there. And those symbols mean something, whether we know it or not cognitively. Yes. Um, yes. So symbology is really going to be their downfall because that oh, is the language good. of the universe, you know? Yes. Yes. That's the language of your higher self. Your higher mind. Yeah. Of your, yeah. your higher self. Yes, absolutely. Um, so let's go to section seven. Uh, yes. Okay. This is like a really cool section to me. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So I like totally dig this section. And the reason why is because this is something so fascinating to me about um, our brain. So the hemisync basically takes advantage of this phenomenon that is called the frequency following response. Okay. So what that means is that let's say, for example, that we give the subject, we, we send a sound into the subject's ear. That is the same frequency that the brain functions at. The brain will try to mimic that frequency output response. And so what that means to me is that let's say our normal, our normal walking, waking state of brain is, is beta. It's called beta, um, wave. Okay. So if you're in a normal beta wave state and you're walking around, you're thinking everything's fine and you put a theta beat in your ears, your brain will try to mimic that frequency output. And while you're awake, if you're not resisting that consciousness, you will go into theta state. Now, here's the fascinating thing about how hemisync and the gateway experience actually works. So what they will do is they will put, let's say, for example, in your left ear, they're going to play us, they're going to play a frequency that is 10 Hertz lower than the hurt than the 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 frequency that they're playing in your right ear. So you, let's say you've got like, um, you know, a 14 Hertz in your right and a four Hertz in your left. Okay. Your, your brain is going to register that as 10 Hertz. So it's not going to hear it individually. Mm, it's not going to okay. hear one sound like, ah, ah. right. It's not right. going to hear that. What it's going to hear is that whoa, 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 in the middle that is mm. the difference between the two. Um, I think that's fascinating. Yeah. Because your brain is basically trained. It strives to entrain its wave frequency output with the one, with the difference between the two that they're playing in your ear. Mm. I don't think I explained that very well, but no, I think that's no. fascinating. No, it's absolutely fascinating. And, and I, he, um, the way he, they, again, reading directly from the text, the way they, the, the, the result is in this way, gateway endeavors to provide the subject with the tools by which he may alter his consciousness based on his own volition over time through the repetitive use of the tape. So as to access via intuitive means, new categories of information, not available to ordinary consciousness. Yes. Again, information from the universe. And again, yes. They know that this is our way basically to tap into universal truth. And this information has been kept from us, but we have the tools right in between our ears to access yes. this information. We just yes. have to avail ourselves of it. Yeah. You know, and I think that's an interesting thing to point out that it says with over time through the repetitive use. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> We know, I want to, I want to, two points that I want to point out here. Okay. Just two little things. One yes. that we know, <laughs> uh, that if we want a six pack, if we want six pack abs, we're not going to go into the gym one time and come out with six pack abs. Okay. Yes. 
Right. So when you think about this, it is the same thing as in training your brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you decide that you want to, um, you know, become higher, higher consciousness or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that is going, the strength required to gain control over your own mind is similar to the strength required to build the muscles in your body. So yes. it's, it's the same with meditation or even altering your thoughts to be kinder and more gentler and more loving towards yourself. It takes discipline and consistency. So don't stay yes. stuck and miserable Yes. because here's the thing. If they can control your mind, they control your soul because yes. your soul is the source of electromagnetic energy and the consciousness that is you. And could that be called, I don't know, a battery? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like the matrix. <laughs> yes, yes. It's an energy source. And the matrix, I know when I first watched that movie, I was like, God dang, this is a bunch of horse shit right here. You know, because <laughs> yeah. I was at that. That's how my mind was when I first watched it. I was like, why does everybody like this? This is really like, oh, my God, like we could ever be batteries. This is so stupid. Like you could just download it, skills into your brain. That's so dumb. Who could who could dodge bullets? You know, and right. I mean, I just completely shredded it. I, I picked it apart. And now when I watch it, I'm like, oh my God, that's true. Oh my God, that's true. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, actually, now I'm thinking, oh, I'm I'm like beyond the matrix now. Like, um, and I and I think a matrix is the, the proper term for this electrical grid system that yeah. we that we live in. And we do live in a in a grid, uh, yeah. you know, in a grid in a matrix. Yeah. Um and actually the thing about the repetition. He uh, further, uh, almost at the bottom of that section, um, he says uh, audible and perhaps subliminal suggestions by Bob Monroe, who was one of the uh, teachers, uh, accompany the various brainwave frequencies, uh, which are sometimes rolled in together with other sounds such as sea surf to mask the sound frequencies, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if you think about the fact that they're putting subliminal, they can put subliminal information in certain frequencies and then if they repeat them enough it starts to affect the way that you think and that sounds to me like the news uh, like a cnn or I like mean, a fox. Uh, yeah 100 percent. i mean because what they're basically doing is they're you know they're overriding the natural rhythm of our brain patterns and brain waves in my opinion absolutely Absolutely. And they're doing it in order to modify how and what we think and in turn use our, our manifestation energy to create the world that suits them. Them. Yes. And I want to point out, we're not talking about it a whole lot at this point, but I want to point out that they can do that with your mental states as well as your emotional states. Yes. For the record. Yes, yes. And Aggression, again, anxiety, um, yes. agitation, you know, things like that. And this is something that, again, that is known. So there is no question whether this is being done on purpose in order to affect us and Absolutely. basically hijack our experience here. And, yeah. and, 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 and they do it. And we talked about this earlier. They do it in order to affect your free will choices. They can't take your free will away. But like I said earlier, they can, they can only give you A or B to choose from when you actually have A through Z to the nth degree. Um, they can only give you A or B to choose from and then manipulate your emotions to point you towards A. Yeah. So yes, you used your free will to make this choice, but did you really? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's an end around. I think it's a loophole. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, a manipulation of on a cosmic scale. And again, the only, we don't need to take down anybody. We don't need to burn down any buildings. We don't need to protest. Cause guess what? I don't need them to tell me I'm free. I decide that I'm free and I don't need lying motherfuckers who have stolen my very existence to agree with me. I don't want to think anything like they think. Amen. So I don't need to go out and hold up a sign and protest and say all these. I don't need that because I, you have no authority over me, even to the extent that I even want to hear your shit. Okay. Right. Right. I don't want anything to do with it. So the only, the way that we take back our earth experience is with our own minds, take back your mind. They can never, ever have that. 
forever. It is always yours unless you give it away. And my message today is stop giving it away. Take it back. Own that shit. Absolutely. I could so, not agree more. We got to we got to take our freedom back and I and I don't matter who agrees. I'm free and I intend to live like I'm free and that includes freeing my mind. Me too. Me too. And so if you want to call me some woo woo weirdo because I'm trying to access some stuff, go <laughs> right. ahead. You know, right. I mean, right. I, there's worse things to be to me. So yes, that's where I'm at. Yes, um, agreed. Yeah. So we're on to the next section of the role of resonance. Yes. So okay. again, you're doing a great job. Go girl. Okay. So essentially this was kind of the interesting thing to me um, about this portion is um, they were talking about yoga, Zen, transcendental meditation. If you practice this long enough, that does produce a change in the sound frequency with which the human heart resonates throughout the entire body. Like that that blows my mind. Yes. That blows my mind. No doubt. Like, okay. So basically what that means to me, and uh, you know, if, if you are doing things purposefully to, to get yourself into an altered state of consciousness, which we'll say is like a peaceful, happy, loving, high vibrational frequency. Okay. Mm-hmm. That changes the human, the, the resonance with which the human heart beats. Why is that important? Okay. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. So we just talked about the brain and how important the brain is with, with producing these, um, electrical impulses. And that's how we measure it. Well, the heart is, I can't remember. Um, I don't think it's on this in this paper, but I think the heart is something like 500 times stronger of an electrical impulse than your brain, Uh which is why Uh they say the heart brain union is so important Yes, um, for them to be in alignment and in resonant frequency with each other yes so and that and that hardly ever happens in our world right now hardly ever yeah people shut down the heart energy and they focus solely on the brain energy and when the, that heart energy starts to try to bubble up and creep up and get your attention you look around you and see other people aren't listening to their hearts they're doing yep. this that or the other thing the hive the hive is doing the those hive things. Yep. That mm-hmm. I, who, as an authentic, sovereign human being, you would not ever do those things. Never. But you, the hive is doing it. And the hive is, is executing the plan from, you know, the queen, whatever that may be. And that's, yeah. a, whole other, that's a whole other podcast. Right, uh, right. Yeah, but they're doing things. They're setting a scene, basically, in this play, in this game. Um, they're setting a scene and then we're like, uh, okay, I guess this is what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, it kind of don't feel right, but look, everybody's doing it. So, okay, I guess I'll do it. And after, after you shut your brain down so many times, after you shut down that effervescence, when you, when you cap it and you put a hat on it and you push it down and you reject it after a while, it starts even trying to be heard. And then you go into where you just naturally execute the hive that you're observing. You aren't getting the, I don't believe you're getting the signal from the queen like the hive does, but it's what you're observing and you want to be accepted by the hive and you want the hive to love you and you love them and you don't want to upset people and you don't want to get arrested <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or put in a, in a straight jacket. So yeah. You go along so, with so the you hive. become a lemming. I mean, yes, it's easier that way. Yeah, yeah it is. E- it's easier that way, and that way you keep your family members and you keep your friends, and you know people yeah. still invite the parties and shit. Um, yeah. So it's it's but it but it is it's not the best way for us to be, and because all of our creative and manifestation energy has been hijacked so much. At this point, we are in a dire place as a yeah. planet. Yes. As, as yeah. a species. We are in dire straits. And so I believe in one great, great moment, we can take this back. 
I believe if we all just begin to to go within and listen to that effervescence again and let that bubble up and let our heart speak for us, um, I believe we have the power to take it back and save save humanity. I do too. I do too. But here, and, and I want to just say one thing to like the point that you just made. It's like, for all of those of you who are listening to this podcast, who feel very alone and like you don't have a lot of people around you, just know that it is difficult to be awake around a, a, a horde of zombies. Like I totally get it. I understand. But let's just think about the importance of what we've already talked about and the electromagnetic waves and frequency signal signals that you're putting out with your brain and your heart, you're bumping up into those people's fields all the time. So just by you being activated and having your brain frequency and heart frequency and alignment and of a higher vibrational field, not only does it keep you safer around them, but two, if you think you're not affecting them, you're crazy. So you doing your work is absolutely affecting them. Your aura is, you know, probably what, like six feet on, on every side of you, outside yes. of you, and maybe larger for those who have a long, a, you know, a stronger yeah. light who have been practicing this kind of stuff. Which is so why they you, want us six feet apart, by the way. Hate to interrupt yes. you, but that's exactly no, why they go. want us six feet apart. That's it, it's no why. Point. They do not want our energies connecting because they know we're activating people, others. We're act boom. We are activating other people with our energies. Those of us who are doing the work, we're activating other people and they do not want that because God nope. forbid we activate other people and God forbid all of our energies sync up uh, because it's game over. It would be over. And they, they don't, they don't want that. And th that six feet is no, what is six feet when it comes to, I mean, it just makes no sense. The story makes no sense yeah, until you, yeah. until you frame it in this context and then it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, this, I don't care what anyone says. This whole coronavirus thing is not about a virus. It's about this kind of stuff right here. What we're talking about. We are bringing a brand new grid system online that has nothing to do with 5g. It has to do with our own internal spiritual technology. We don't need higher technology to, achieve what it is they're trying to artificially create in our world yes yes it's it's a it's a false grid it's a it's false, a false matrix. Grid. Yeah, it false is a false grid. and 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 when you don't have that mm, when you don't have that connection with your mind and your heart and that tuning fork and that true north you can connect to the false grid and a lot of again the hive the hive does connect to the false grid and they take their orders from that yeah. And, and so you just have to be, you know, again, mind your vibration. What you said about doing your own work is so important. Even if you never said one word to anybody, even if you yep. never taught, even if you never woke up anybody with your words or your actions, even if you've never even met that person, doing your work, raising your vibration absolutely affects the people, the, the energies of the people around you, 100%. Yep. It sure does. It sure does. It does. Well, and, and then if you think about the, the ripple effect, if, if you talk about um, the micro versus macro, if you change something really tiny on a micro scale, that has huge ramifications in the macro. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Abs absolutely. I mean, it's the butterfly effect. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. You know? So yeah. I, I, or back to the, the hundredth monkey, if you know anything about Rupert Sheldrake and his work on morphic resonance and the morphic field, you yeah. know, I, I, I like to hashtag be the hundredth monkey, be the one that tips the scale. But if you never do your work and you don't dig down, then you're tipping the scale like the wrong way. So which one, cause you're affecting it one way or another, whether you think you are or not, you're affecting it. So what effect are you going to have on the whole? Exactly. So you got to think about that. Yeah. Or at least if you, I, I think about that because that's yeah. how, that's how what I'm here for. I came into this experience in order to do this work. So yeah, that, that's, agree. that's what I think about. I know that that's not everybody's, but whatever your passion is, whatever, uh, you know, again, that goes back to raising your vibration and your vibration is high when you're following your passion and you're authentic and it's, mm. and it, it goes, it's lowered 
and muffled when you're trying to execute this plan of the hive that's counterintuitive to what your heart says. So well, it, absolutely, because your heart, I mean, most people are not sociopaths, like the way their world <laughs> is run. I mean, I don't yeah. believe, I believe personally, most people are not complete sociopaths. And right. so when you are confusing and destroying the organic signals that normally keep the mind and body in a state of equilibrium, balance and harmony, um, you're, you're not you're imbalanced and you're creating dis-ease within Mm. your body. Yeah. You are shutting down genetic switches responsible for DNA expression. Um, You know, you're changing the way your brain processes information. You're, you're transmitting suggestions. You're influencing specific conditions in the mind and body. Like you, I mean, the, 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 the absolute mind blowing, uh, magnification of how important this is. I can't, I just, I can't even say how important this specific document is. Like, dude, I'm telling you. And we haven't even gotten much disclosure. Yes. And we haven't even gotten to my favorite parts, which are about the holographic universe and the fact that there's no, there's no such thing as matter. Dude, because I've believed that that was one of the first things when I started waking up and again, we should, we definitely have to do a podcast on waking up because that's a whole, yes. whatever oh, yeah. the amnesia starts to wear off. But when I first started waking up, I got rapid, boom, 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 like just like rapid downloads of all this information. And one of the, so you'll hear me a lot say when I first woke up, I got this or that download. I literally got like a freaking crash course, probably kind of like the matrix when they downloaded the ninja skills or whatever the hell that was the fight and stuff okay it was kind of like that but one of the things that i got was that there's no such thing as solid matter it doesn't exist it's all energy everything is energy and before that download i i i had heard that before and i thought it was absolute you know bad shit i thought it was bad shit and then when i downloaded it again it came with that truth resonance and i was like holy shit there's no such thing as matter (laughs) yeah so yeah so so when that when i when i read that in this paper i was like god damn that was true and that that encourages me to to believe my my downloads too yes because yeah because you can back them up yes yes and like we talked about earlier you're like you know you get it but then part of you is like no that can't possibly true because it counters everything all of your programming up until now in your life yeah Well, and that's where we talked, we had talked about beliefs earlier and it's like the moment you believe something and you hold on to that as truth. Yep. If you find information that counteracts or contradicts that, and you have a strong belief within your held within your body, you stop your growth and evolution right there. Yes. Yes. You have to be open to the new resonances because what was true for you and served you at one time may not serve you any longer because you've grown. So you yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing. Um, I will say, <laughs> don't be, don't be super proud of the fact that you have really strong, hold very strong beliefs. No, right. be, proud of, be, be proud of the fact that you yes. can change your mind when presented with new evidence. That is truly when yes. you know that you are an evolving being, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. New, new, inf- new evidence mixed with the resonance of truth. Yeah. When those, t- when those two things come together, but you can't have the resonance of truth. If you aren't open to new information, it'll never be able to resonate if you won't even consider it. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be open to consider the truth, because I see so-called evidence all day long that counters what I know to be true. I don't accept that because it does not resonate with me as true. So, but I am always listening and learning and I'm, I'm, you know, information is presented to me and then I will at least hear it out and, and feel it. I'll allow it in enough that I feel and I go, does this feel true? No, it does not. So I reject right. it. Or yes, it feels true. Holy crap, that is true. Now I take, I do away with the old thing that I believed, which I, I, I kind of want to stop using that word as it right. relates to myself. Be lie. Um, <laughs> be lie. Exactly. Yeah. I take that and I go, okay, that's 
that's what I needed. That's the information I needed to get to this place. Now I'm at a new place and now I have new, uh, new, um, you know, new thing, new ideas, thoughts, concepts, etc. Right. A new perspective, like a whole new paradigm, yes. maybe even. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because I allowed it. I allowed it. I was, I'm open to it and I'm accepting of my own evolution. Right. The belief stops evolution. Yes. Yes. I agree. Yes. And so if, if you yeah. have no desire to expand or evolve, then you're cool, man. Hang out there in that, in the little waiting pool. That's fine. And well, I, and I, I mean, actually, I think the danger to that though, too, is that unfortunately we are, we are in an anti-consciousness state with the way that we are. So if you're not doing any work to evolve or grow or expand your consciousness, then you are actually engaging in anti-creation, in my opinion, anti-creation, anti-evolution, um, consciousness, um, false light, false light consciousness. And once you get to a point yeah. Where you as a soul no longer want to grow or experience anything. Uh, it, what what happens? What do you do? Your yeah, soul what's the point? Is dying, basically. I mean, you're in dead. A way, if you think about it, you that are way. dead. Yeah. It's dead. Yeah. It's dead. It's dead. It's it's dead. It's like the, the it's like the Dead Sea. It's just it, there's it's water, but it's dead. Nothing can live in it. So yeah. you're technically still alive, but your body's alive. But that's it. I mean, the thing is, like, if you really want to get down to it, we are literally being blocked from receiving communication signals at higher frequencies from our soul, from our spiritual families, from, I don't know, you know, whatever it is that you might believe in, whatever, outside of this third dimensional reality. But if you want to, if you want to see that frequency fence gone, then wake up and see that it exists. Boom. That's so good. That's true. Because people don't even know that. None they of this is know. going away if we can't wake up and see that it's happening and stop manifesting it with this dirty tech and tacit consent and doing nothing and pretending it doesn't exist. That is anti-life consciousness. And at some point, consciousness won't be able to remain here if, if we continue. You know what I mean? Like, what else yes. could it be? Yes. And and for me personally, I, I've, I've invested too much. I've been through too much here in order to just surrender my life and say, Oh, well, I tried. It's over, whatever. I I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm pushing through. I came here on a mission and I'm pushing through and I'm going to see it through to the end, even if, even if, and when it is hard. Yes. And and I hope everyone, and I hope everyone will do that because otherwise, again, what's the point of being here? Right. Exactly. So we'll go to the next section so we can get through this. Our little podcast thing only gives us two hours, but I'm hoping, I was hoping to try to keep it at an hour and a half, but if it goes two hours, let us, let's just, okay. you know, yeah. you can listen yeah. to it whenever you can listen to it on your way to work or at work or when you're working out or taking a shower or whatever. So section nine, brain stimulation. Okay. I found this, this was like, this for me was one of my favorite ones, like, Okay, so basically what Bentov is saying is that in this model, it showed that um, you could basically, there is a resulting vibration that is received and transmitted into the brain itself via the fluid that is located around the brain stem and the third and left ventricles, okay? So Mm. when an electromagnetic pulse is... um, generated it and stimulates the brain to raise the amplitude and frequency of the brainwave output, like similarly, similarly to what we were talking about with the, the beats that you're putting in with your hemisync tape tapes. Right. Uh Um, so basically what happens, interestingly enough, is there's this cushion, um, of fluid between the brain and the skull. And as the coherence increases, and you begin relaxing and the fluid layer surrounds the brain and all this kind of stuff, the brain actually, I guess it moves up and down in a rhythmic pattern, in a continuous rhythmic pattern. Um, And what that does, which I thought was really flipping cool, is what that does is that it tunes your whole system to be in coherence with your heart, your brain, um, 
And these are occurring at very, very long wavelengths. Dude, so, it says this is occurring at a very long wavelength of about uh, 40,000 kilometers or just about the perimeter of the planet. The planet, yes. In other, in other words, the signal from the movement of our bodies will travel around the world at about one-seventh of a second through the electrostatic field in which we are embedded. Such a long wavelength knows no obstacles and its strength does not attenuate much over large distances. It doesn't lose strength no matter how far it goes. Naturally, yep. it will go through just about anything. It will go through metal, concrete, water, and the fields making up our bodies. It says it is the ideal medium for conveying a telepathic Pathic signal. signal. What? Boom. Boom. What? Yes. So basically what we're saying is, you know, humans, if y'all got into this little state, we could all telepathically connect with one another, period. Yes. Because we're yes. literally this specific um, frequency, this wavelength is the absolute best um, source for conveying that signal. Yes. And you know, I really think that we do do this already. Yes. Uh, we naturally do this sometimes when we aren't thinking about it. It's just like when you just thought about someone and then they call you. Yes. Or you just thought about someone and you see them at the store. That's what is. That's what this is. It actually is a telepathic link that you have to that person that was created uh, ba based on your relationship and your interaction with each other. You could yeah. you created a link, and then, and, and I don't know what causes it to happen sometimes and why it doesn't happen sometimes. I'm guessing it has to do. Well, obviously, it has to do with when our minds went into a theta state to able to receive this information. Um, and the other, and the other person that you're connecting with, I think, you know, yes, yes. So that person was thinking about you. They probably entered a theta state while they were driving because they shut off that part of the brain. You, you had the same experience at around the same time and boom, you got the information. So yes. you are, we are telepathic period. Yes. That's not, which is there's why no we don't, which is why we don't need all this dirty tech of 5g and all these cell phones and stuff. I mean, we're just, we're using the wrong technology. And if we had Tesla's way, when it yes. should have happened, we wouldn't be in this situation, in my opinion. Yes. I, and that's why they didn't allow Tesla's exactly. Tesla tech. That's, yes. that's why they didn't do it because they do. Because Tesla was building, you know, I guess I would, for lack of a better word, but towers to um you know tesla was discovering how to build towers to tap into this specific these specific frequencies that actually function um coherently with our brain and bodies what we did yes. instead was chose this dirty tech that is actually manipulating our frequencies in a negative uh. and harmful inorganic way this is yes. not organic ascension this is inorganic ascension tactics Yes. And, and it is tactics. It is. And it's unnatural, unnatural. And, and, I, and I, no, it isn't good for our bodies. And it's like, okay, thanks. I appreciate because if it weren't for this, we wouldn't have all connected. Right. So it's like, thanks, but let's move past this now. I right. appreciate like, it. It served its purpose. Now let's, let's move on. Similar to your belief uh, analogy. Just, like, it's just time to move on. It, it is what it is. It's neither here nor there. Nobody's going to judge it. We're not going to be angry. No fear, right. whatever. Just let, we right. need to, now that we know better, we need to do, do better. better. That's it. That's all. And, and, and don't, and I, I fell into the trap of getting angry about the stuff for a while. Me. That's yeah. everybody does. I mean, it's yeah. part of the waking it's up, the you know? Yeah. yeah. So I, I fell into that trap and now I'm like, okay, I was mad, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That sucked. That was rude as hell. Okay. Now let's, let, how do I get out of here? Right. I realize where I am. I realize what the hell is going on. All right, what's next? So this paper goes a long way in helping us get the F out of the situation. Right. Uh, right. So were you done with that section? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's okay. the only thing I kind of wanted to point out. The last thing was like, you know, one of the things that we're talking about is like, you know, telepathy and um, accessing altered states of consciousness and higher wisdom and all this kind of stuff. But here's the thing that the gateway process induces a state of profound calm in the nervous system. It significantly mm -hmm. lowers your blood pressure. Um, it, it's, you know, it, that causes the circulatory system, the skeleton, all your other organs to vibrate coherently. 
So Mm -hmm. your whole entire body is healthier. So, you know, I mean, I just, there are a whole lot of profound health effects to doing this as well without all the really cool knowledge and information that you're going to be accessing, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think that it, it, be good for me to, to do this and uh, watch the cumulative effects on my negative health situations. I think mm-hmm. this is, this is what's going to have to be done in order to get better. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's on me to do it and I will. Well, you know, it's, you know, I, I, I want to do it too. I'm really going to try and find the, I want the focus tapes, the focus three tapes at the very least, but um, well, the Monroe Institute is, and, and this actually, this is based on um, research from the Monroe Institute and the Monroe Institute still is still active. I think they've been active since something like 1950 or uh, uh, 60s. Um, right. So this, there's still a Monroe Institute right now, monroeinstitute.org. You can go to their website. They do have free meditations on that website. So you can go to there. Um, there's obviously paid programs too that you could access, but yeah. a lot of their stuff you can find right on YouTube. So it's, it's available at, at any time for anyone. Um, so the next section is section 10 called energy entrainment. So essentially what this is talking about is really just building up the energetic field surrounding the body. And they're talking about using energy from the earth's field, which is interesting because if you think about the Schumann resonance, the Schumann Mm -hmm. resonance itself is basically the same resonance with which the human body resonates at. Yes. And so now what they're talking about is because we are, um, we're using energy from the earth's field, which the body is now in training because it's ability to resonate with it. So you're essentially, so do you see how we're just kind of expanding out? So we were talking about uh, the heart, the brain, the circulatory system, the muscular system. Well, now we're talking about connecting this energy with the actual frequency of the earth. So we're, we're going from micro to macro, even just yes. as we travel through this paper, you know what I mean? Yes. Yep. Um, so essentially that's, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else you want to point out in that section, just, but essentially it's, it's just, you are starting to resonate with the frequency of the earth more. And this, in the very last sentence of that section explains, it sums it up by resonating with the earth's electromagnetic sphere. The human body creates a surprisingly powerful carrier wave to assist the mind in communication activity with other human minds similarly attuned, which means, which means that that's why I found Becca and that's why Becca found me. And that's why we found Bobby. Bobby, And that's, and, and that's why you're finding people. Like they say, I found my tribe. Yep. Okay. That is your energy spreading across the earth's electromagnetic sphere and communicating to similar carrier waves. So that's what I mean by when I say we are building the new grid, we are coming online. Yes, girl. Yes. Yes. That's so, but if I hadn't raised my vibration to be a, um, I, well, I don't know why I can't think of words right now, but to be compatible with, Becca's and Bobby's and all my other lovely uh, soul fam that I've found that I would have found them, you know, and and that's also why sometimes when you try to explain a concept to somebody uh, who hasn't, and and I don't want to say who hasn't, I'm going to say who hasn't done the work, but I don't mean that to have such a negative context to it because it's okay. If you, you may not have come here for this, maybe you don't want to do the work. Maybe you've done the work. You've already defeated this level and you just want to come here and engage in pure fuckery. That's okay. If that's, you know, maybe that's what you want to do. That's cool. I don't mean it, but if you, if you're not, if you haven't done what we have done, to get to where we are, or if you haven't input the data that we have input and worked on your frequency, then you, that person, no matter what you try to tell somebody, they're not going to get it because they're not vibrating. It's like, man, I catch your vibe. Like I'm vibing with you. Like that's what that means. It literally is a vibration. 
So yeah. if they're, if they're, if their energy isn't on that compatible with that carrier wave, then they can't catch it. And they are not going to understand what you're saying, no matter how hard you try to explain it. So that goes back to don't be, don't be, uh, you can make your points and you can teach people, but when it gets to the point of a debate and an argument uh, of an argument, Debates can be healthy, yes. but when it turns into an, a full-on argument and you can see that that person ain't picking up what you're putting down, then back off. They're so, you're, you're lowering yeah. yourself because the only way for you to understand, there's a, um, my stepdad used to have a, a cup that said, I'm trying to see things from your point of view, but I can't fit my head that far up my ass. Oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's, that's, bas- that's basically like... In order to understand you, I'd have to come back down to where you are yeah. or go a, or raise up to where you are. And I'm not there yet. So just stop, chill it out. Stop explaining yourself to people who are hell bent on misunderstanding you. Like yes. it's a waste of time and energy. Just stop. stop. Yes, absolutely. It's it is. Okay. You know, right. and also, by the way, for all you people out there who think that you know, you're going to hate all these people just because they choose to wear a mask or choose not to wear a mask. It's like, you don't have to get to that point. Like that's ridiculous. Um, you know, you can, you can still disagree with people who are kind and loving, not complete jackasses. Right. Yes. Right. Of course. But if somebody is just still a kind person, like you can, we need to learn how to lovingly disagree with people and be okay with them not seeing things our way. It's okay. A hundred percent. And and you're never going to have anyone that you agree about every single thing. I no. mean, and it's, and it's okay because it, I mean, again, it goes back to what is motivating you. Is it your ego or is it genuine growth? Yeah. And, and, and so I catch myself getting my ego gets hurt too. And it takes me, I do, I integrate it a lot faster than I used to. Sometimes it would take years or months or weeks or days and now it takes me maybe an hour to integrate that and wash it out and move it on through you know that 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 damage to my ego that I get sometimes when when somebody's being a jackhole you know right right um and so you're gonna feel that way because you're still in a human body but the quicker you integrate it you go, you recognize it, you go, okay, cool, that's how I'm feeling. All right, let me move that through, pull it up through my body, send it out. I send it out through the top of my head. I transmute it back in the universe as love and say, thank you for what you taught me. Now get the fuck out. <laughs> you know, right? and, and the faster you do that, then you're, you can maintain a higher vibration. Yes. If you can practice doing that regularly, then you can well, maintain your like- higher vibration. It's like cleaning your windows once a year versus every day. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But, but you, you have, have to know, complaints. and if you aren't even aware of the fact that you have a vibration or that it affects other things, right. then you don't even know to even try in it. You don't even know what to even start. Right. Right. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it was this funny. Helps. I mean, just we're getting really serious. So I'll throw a funny in here, but okay. on my, on my dating profile, I told, I said, Do not message me if you cannot name three solid ways to ground yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, may not apply, you know? Yes. Yes. I'm trying. I'm trying. But yeah, I mean, you know. Yes. No, that's great. That's great. It's like, you know who you are and you drew your boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. And that's. And that's huge because most people don't even know who they are or, or what they're even about. Right. Um, so the next section is called consciousness and energy. And I love this one. Um, go you ahead. take this one. No, you take uh, Okay. So he, I'll start it. Um, and again, I'm going to read directly from it. Cause it's, that's the best way for me to get to the point. Cause if I'm left to it, I'll never get there. Okay. okay. <laughs> before, before our explanation can proceed any further, it is essential to define the mechanism by which the human mind exercises the function known as consciousness and to describe the way in which that consciousness operates to deduce meaning from the stimuli, which it receives. So I love this. 
He says, to do this, we will first consider the fundamental character of the material world in which we have our physical existence in order to accurately perceive the raw stuff with which our consciousness must work. So basically in here, he goes a lot, real complicated ways of saying this shit ain't real. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There, this is where he says there is no such thing as solid matter. He says, let's see, rather blah, blah, blah. It basically what we think indeed. Okay. Indeed. If the term matter is taken to mean solid substance, as opposed to energy, which is understood to mean a force of some sort, then the use of the former is entirely misleading. Science mm. now knows, science now knows, and this was in 83, science now knows that both the electrons which spin in the energy field located around the nucleus of the atom and the nucleus itself are made up of nothing more than oscillating energy grids. Solid matter in the strict construction of the term simply does not exist. So, so I can tell you that that's not what I learned. That's not how electrons functioned in engineering school. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was the difference? Or um, that it was solid it matter. This? That it was right. solid matter. Right. And but that, that electrons filled holes and that's how electricity works and all these kind of things. And so if you think about that, that right there is the difference between Edison versus Tesla. Yes. Because they were completely and wholly. I was taught as an electrical engineer to that, that these little tiny particles that make up at these things are solid matter, not energy. So, you know, that's one of the things that helped to wake me too, is because I realized that um, regular physics is not, um, no, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's not right because there's, no. the, it, it's, it's all material science and it, it, material right. science is wrong. Period. Hey, it's wrong. And, and there, there, I'm going to go to the end of this section and read what he said, and then give you how my brain uh, okay. took this information. He says, the point to be made is that the entire human being brain consciousness and all is like the universe which surrounds him nothing more or less than an extraordinarily complex system of energy fields okay oh. yeah so i'll tell you my immediate thought when i read that goes back to my bible days um jonah you know the guy that was that was thrown off the boat and swallowed yep. by the whale and spit out on the beach and he had to go to nineveh to, to give the Ninevites a message from God. Well, yeah. Jonah is walking from the beach to the, to Nineveh, which is a whole other, how the world he did that. But anyway, he's walking <laughs> there. I mean, if you look at the geography, but anyway, he's walking there. And after this man done, got this almost killed all these people on this boat. And he got, he got thrown off and got, and he was saved by this whale, which was probably a USO, but whatever. He's saved <laughs> by this thing under the water and he spit out on the beach. I mean, he's, as far as he knows, God has performed all these miracles and he's walking to Nineveh and he's pissy as hell. And he's like, God, it's fucking hot. I'm miserable. Oh, and he's like huffing and puffing, talking about how hot he is. And he's in the desert. There's no greenery anywhere. And he sits down and he's whining and pissing and moaning. And God causes a, I think it says a bush or a vine. God causes a vine to grow up over him and give him shade. And when I read this, for some reason, my first thought was about the vine that gave Jonah shade. And I always wondered, how did he do that? And now, or how was, how did that happen? And now I know it's because there isn't any such thing as solid matter. It's only energy. So you can manipulate energy to create anything that you want. You just have to organize the energy in a certain way. Yep. So causing a vine to, to present itself in the middle of a desert is nothing to a learned superhuman type thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, so it, it makes all the miraculous things that we've heard about that you think are impossible. It takes them out of the realm of impossibility and puts them right in your lap as not only possible, but probable. Absolutely. And it's sometimes even absolute.
So it changes everything. You realize I don't have to move a physical item from this place to that place. I just have to learn how to arrange the energy near me to manifest this thing or that thing. Yes. So that cha- it changed every reading that changed everything for me. I like, mean, I, you can totally, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you can totally see in multiple places because you, you know, you and I have similar backgrounds in multiple places in the Bible where it's like things that I was like, there is no absolute way that could ever happen. Now I'm like, huh, yes. that really could have happened. So again, yes. what you said in the beginning was it's like, none of this, none of this negates the fact God could be consciousness itself. It doesn't mean yes. that there is no God, right? It's right. not. So, you know, just open your mind, right? Deal deal with the cognitive dissonance because you, if you do, you may unlock stuff that you never would have otherwise been able to understand before. If you just open your mind a little bit, the things all might come together for you, you know, to me, it, it more proves a, a, an overarching benevolence creator. Yep. To I me, agree. it does more to prove it. It doesn't disprove it. It proves it all. And it, and it explains how, how it was all done. Yeah. And again, that, that doesn't negate those, those things. It just enhances your understanding of them, at least for me, because I don't have dogma attached yes. to what I think anymore. Yeah. And, and, but I did a lot of work to get to, to detach from that. And I was very motivated because I was like, Oh God, am I really going to hell or not? (laughs) You know, know, and like you, I'm, I'll take information from anywhere I can get it. It doesn't mean that I believe it just because I'm reading it, but I will take the information that I can get. And then I will determine what I do with that because I know that my body is an antenna and truth is a resonant frequency in my body. And I will be able to figure it out because I trust my discernment because I've done my work. You know what I mean? So yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So take in the information. Like don't, if you, if you're like, okay, I believe that the sky is blue and you see an article that says the sky is now purple, say scientists just freaking read it. If right, it makes you right. feel a certain type of way, read it. That's probably a sign that you need to read it more, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're like, wait a minute. What? Just yeah. this guy. I, I, uh, I did that recently with a, uh, someone on the news, some, some mayor somewhere. I don't remember where, um, actually issued a statement. Like he did a, an interview on the news where he's basically, he said, um, people should wear their masks inside of their house. What? And the article, the article said local mayor uh, tells people to wear masks even in their own home. And it made me feel some type of way. So I read it because <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, no, please, <laughs> yeah. please, 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 please explain yourself, you know? Yeah. And, and I, and I read it, even though I thought it was total horseshit. I, I read it because I wanted to see Again, I tried to fit my head up my asshole and I couldn't yeah, even yeah. after I read the article. I was like, <laughs> okay. And, 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 you know, his point was about, oh, well, if you have family and it's company over and, you know, you're having a get together at your house, you know, wear a mask, you, you should do it for your, you should be wearing a mask indoors and you should do it for your, for your fellow citizens and all this horse shit. And I was like, okay. I thought it was horseshit and I confirmed that it was, but it, I left open the possibility that I might learn something like there might be a reason for this, but you know, there really was, there, there wasn't, there really wasn't. <laughs> it was just more social engineering. Not that, not that example, but usually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Right. I mean, but I'm saying, even though I immediately, my knee jerk reaction was, what is this crap? And right. then I, I, I confirmed it to be crap. But it, again, I was open to the fact that I might've learned something new altogether. Yeah. So I took yeah. the time to rather than just go, Oh, that's stupid. And just keep scrolling. I was like, okay, is it as stupid as I think it is? Yeah, it is as stupid as I think it was. Um, so then we'll hit the next section, um, section 12 holograms. Yeah. And this one this one for me, just I'm going to let you explain it because this blows my mind and it's too detailed for me. But I can tell you my conclusion after reading section 12 is the same conclusion I reached after section 11, which is this shit ain't real. So take it away, Becca, if you can okay. explain the holograms. So this is fascinating to me. And basically what this section is talking about is how 
Um, energy creates, stores, and retrieves meaning in the universe by projecting or expanding at certain frequencies in a three-dimensional mode. And that creates a living pattern called a hologram. So if you think about energy within a confined space, um, those frequencies in a third dimensional model is that hologram. So he kind of explains this in a really cool way. And I'm just going to kind of read what he, okay. the way that he does, because I think he explains it really well. But the concept of the hologram is basically he asks you to visualize a bowl full of water. And then in that water, you drop three pebbles in there. As the ripples created by the simultaneous entry of the three pebbles, pebbles radiate outwards towards the rim of the bowl, he wants you to then, then visualize that the surface of the water is suddenly flash frozen so that the ripple pattern is preserved. So you got a bowl full of water flash frozen with ripple pattern on the top. Yeah. So then he talks about the ice is removed, leaving the three pebbles still laying at the bottom of the bowl. Okay. So then he's talking about the ice is exposed to a very powerful, coherent source of light, such as a laser. So okay. then the result is a three-dimensional model or representation of the position of the three pebbles suspended in midair. That blows my mind. Like me too. I'm like, what? Like, how? How does that happen? Uh, yeah. And it that takes me back to our minds being a laser. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. That we can laser focus our minds, uh, which tells me, yeah, that you can create any reality that you want. Yeah. Or rather, you can experience any reality that you want. I mean, and here's the thing: he talks about how complex this kind of thing can be. I mean, he says that holograms are capable of encoding so much detail that it would be possible uh -huh. to take a holographic projection of a glass of swamp water, view it under magnification, uh -huh. and you would see organisms uh -huh. not visible to the naked eye when the glass of water itself is examined. That is how... Uh, that like, that is how much energy, I'm sorry, um, information can be encoded from the energy of that hologram. So imagine so, how much information is in our little energetic hologram world. Yes. And that also tells me that some of the things that you think you see on the news or even with your own eyes in real life may not even be true. It, it may, it may not even be true. You can touch it, smell it, look at it under a microscope but it still may not be real. Yep. And, and I think that this, well, first of all, I think we are living in a holographic universe. And I think that's what this is. Same. This is yeah. saying we do, we live in a holographic universe, but it also needs to just give you pause sometimes. And you're like, no, I, I saw it. I saw it happen. Like it happened right in front. Like I saw planes fly into those buildings. I saw it. Like, yes, you did see it. Yes, you did see it. But it is left to interpretation. Well, and here's the interesting thing that you bring that up, because he talks about in this study that he did, he said, he said, if like, let's say you take a, a laser beam and you shine it at something and it's reflected first mm -hmm. off an object like a human face. Mm -hmm. The record will be a hologram of the face. So that laser will, right, the, the will encapsulate that face. And it will be a hologram of the face in the laser. So meaning right. if you were to shine a laser through a, an airplane, I mean, and encode it, you yeah. could project an airplane holographically and it would look like it's an airplane right. and people will see it's an airplane, but it's not even there. Yes. Right. Exactly. And that kind of, we think of holograms as like, oh, look, they projected a weird, you know, Max Headroom right. on the wall. I don't know if you remember yes, Max Headroom. Totally. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like we think of that because that's what they have programmed into our psyche as far as what a hologram yep. is. But truth be told, holograms are 
likely used to manipulate the ever loving crap out yep. of us. And, it, and they do know and have known about this technology. Um, well, Max Hedger so, was what? We were like like 10 or something? I don't know. We were, yeah, we were little, like 9, 10. So like that, I mean, that's that, like so 89, that was, like shortly after this paper even, you know, came out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So they, they, they know and they utilize this stuff. And I say they, and I don't want to qualify who they right. is. I'm just going to say the ones that aren't like right. us, because that's a whole other conversation of who they might be. I agree. But um, uh, whoever it is, who, you know, whoever thinks they're they're, they're whoever's manipulating this so-called reality, they utilize those. And I just want you to know about them because I want you to, again, have that little nugget in the back of your mind when you see things. Just hold up. Like, did I, did that? Let me not give my, let me, because you, when you think you see it, then I'll, then you send emotional energy to it. You send manifestation energy to it. And then you create, uh, you, you energetically support and prop up that thing. Yes. Well, so if you have more discernment, you can stop propping up that stuff. And that's a perfect segue into the next section. Because basically yes. what he, he's talking about in the next section is the consciousness matrix where he's talking about the universe is, you know, we've been, we've proven at this point from this paper that the universe yes. is composed of interacting energy fields. None of it's matter, right? Some of it's in rest, yep, some of it's yep. in motion. And yep. it is in and of itself one gigantic <laughs> hologram of unbelievable complexity. So then they're talking That's about, it. so we live in a hologram and then our human yes. mind is a hologram, which attunes itself to the universal hologram by the medium of energy ex exchange. So if you, if Holy you think crap. about it this way, yeah. like think about the earth, there's different energy um, fields all over the earth. Like this one might be 12 um, Hertz and this one might be four Hertz and this one might be 16 Hertz and this one might be four, uh, 15 Hertz or whatever. They're, they're different um, parts of the hologram have different energetic fields, which your hologram, hologram mind is also interacting with. And so even in this respect, we can, we can see the micro to the macro. Yes. Yes. And, and he, there's a couple things uh, back to remember how I said, basically you can, you can, you can create any experience that you want to have yeah. here. Um, I said that, and there's two really important things. This is one um, again, reading directly from the text. It, he says changes in the frequency and amplitude of the electrostatic field, which comprises the human mind determines the configuration and hence the character of the holographic energy matrix, which the mind projects to intercept meaning directly from the holographic transmissions of the universe. So literally the way that you control and manage your frequency and amplitude affects how your universe presents itself. That's number one. And number two if you go further down, he talks about, he says, to make sense of what the holographic image is saying to it, the mind proceeds to compare the image just received with itself. That's how we determine what something means is how it compares to ourselves. And that takes me to one of the most important concepts that I am learning right now is know thyself. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you, if everything in your world, if you determine what it is based on how it compares to you, then you best know you, yep. that changes everything. It changes how you perceive everything, how you know yourself translates into how you perceive this world. Well, here's what I'm going to say about that, my dear, your body. Okay. If we're, a, if we're in a hologram, okay. And our brain is a hologram then our body is a holographic light projector and your body and brain filter light waves for your consciousness. And in return, you put out biological light emissions. Mm. So if your filter, if your holographic mm. light projector is dirty, if your body and brain are yes. filtering that through a dirty consciousness, you're putting out dirty oh, yeah. light emissions. 
Mm, and then that affects the experience. Correct. You have. And it also affects that affects those what? people around you. Because remember when I said there was like some yes. that might be 12 hertz and some might be four hertz. If there's a yes. lower consciousness area of the planet, um, that affects everybody that's in that area. In that, I mean, you know, how could it not? Right. And that's why certain of us are sent to certain geographical locations because that location needs a bump, a light bump, <laughs> basically. Bingo. Um, Bingo. So we're sent there. And there's a quote at the end of this section. Uh, the psychologist Keith Floyd says, quote, contrary to what everyone knows is so it may not be the brain that produces consciousness, but rather consciousness that creates the appearance of the brain. Boom. Holy shit. Yeah. The I mean, just put the mic down. Right, The body, the skin suit technology that we're in is a product of the consciousness of this space-time continuum and where we happen to be. Yes. That's what I believe anyways, that that, that's kind of saying. Yes, yes. We are manifesting a body in accordance to what that energetic holographic signature is that we live in. Yes, yes. And without knowing it. Without knowing it, Because that that thing what we're projecting has been hijacked uh our thoughts and consciousness have been hijacked so what we're projecting is not what we would normally naturally be projecting right all of it's been hijacked so we're projecting something else that is counter to what we naturally are yes and and that takes it into the next section which um i'm just going to pull a quote from that one so we can get through this but the, the next section, which was brain and phase, this is a quote from Itzhak Bentoff, which, by the way, Bentoff himself, fascinating character. He was a Jew from Czechoslovakia. Um, he had no formal education whatsoever, but he invented the heart catheter. He invented a remote heart catheter. He actually had also invented diet spaghetti, which is all- <laughs> <laughs> he needed he. He needed it for himself. And so he just created yeah, he's it. a problem solver. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, super, super cool dude, man. Love that guy. I mean, what I know about him and what I've learned from him, super cool. His parents were killed in the Holocaust. You know, he just, he just, he was like a really cool character. But this quote from the next section, he says, our whole reality is constructed by constantly making those comparisons we talked about earlier. Whenever we perceive something, we always perceive differences only. Um, So again, that goes back to what, have you created as um, measuring sticks, you know, in your mind? What have you accepted as your measuring sticks and what is standard? That's, you're going to compare what you see to what you have determined as a proper measuring stick. And you're only going to see uh, the, yeah. the differences. So what that reminds yeah. me of is like uh, the easiest one I can think of is the left-right political paradigm. So you're not, they're yep. not interested in coming together and finding ways that they're the same. They're only interested right. in pointing out the differences, which only further divides and separates. Yes. And on all of this really makes me think that we have been undergoing a mass, a mass spell um, between to separate the left and yeah. right, because God forbid the left and right come together in the outside world, the left and right might start to come together inside of our brain. Oh yeah. Micro macro, um, you know, yes. as above, so below, yes. as within, so without all of these concepts yep. that are, that run through, um, all of these, you know, religions and, and they're all the same. They're all the same concepts. They just might be a little bit different. That's how you know that some of these thing those are the little candy coated truths that they've wrapped up in the lies you know yeah yes yes and that exactly and that's where we we're gonna have to be responsible for for taking back our our earth experience and i don't i don't have all the answers i am barely barely scratching the surface but again i my encouragement is to like dig in there get in there you know, like a dog with a bone, we got to make something else happen. Um, Because if you know, there, there's, there's a risk that if we don't, bad shit's going to go down. Yeah, you know, so, so we really, we really have to and this, this lets me know that we really do have a true opportunity. We really, really, yes, you can change the world. That's not just a t shirt, or a poster, or a coffee mug. 
that's real. Yeah. You can. You can. You can. And in this same, in this same section, he says, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I'm just going to say the whole statement in states of expanded consciousness, the right hemisphere of the human brain and its holistic, nonlinear and nonverbal mode of functioning acts as the primary matrix or receptor for this holographic input. While by operating in phase or coherence with the right brain, the left hemisphere provides the secondary matrix through its binary computer like method of functioning to screen further the data by comparison and to reduce it, reduce it to a discrete two dimensional form to bring it down to its simplest understandable form. But he again refers to your brain as computer like. Mm -hmm. uh, so our, our brains really are uh, biological computers. Yeah. That is yeah. what they are. Our skin suit technology. Yeah. Again, yes, our skin suit technology. Um, I, I'm thinking we should stop yeah, in here. Yeah, because I think we 20 half... minutes before, yeah. Yes, yes. And it'll take us that long to finish this conversation. Just this conversation. Oh. So we'll stop at, so we'll, we'll start again and we'll do, we'll start at section 16, evaluation, which is perfect, yep, that actually. That is a good place to start um, cause, next time. Yeah, because we're going to. Yes, so we're going to run out of time. So what are your closing thoughts? Okay, well, I have a lot of them really. But to Come sum on. it up, girlfriend, what I'm going to say here is that <laughs> one, we've pretty much established that <laughs> we have been completely lied to and manipulated about the science behind all of our reality for at least 30 years, probably a lot longer. But for sure with this paper, at least 30 years. Okay. Yes. Right. And what this paper to me does is it ties together so many different arenas. We're talking medicine. We're talking, oh, yes. we're talking um, meditation. We're talking um, science. We're talking biology. We're talking genetics. Like we're talking, yep. um, Religion, yeah, everything. Collective consciousness, religion. So this paper is like, to me, kind of like the hub of if you can yes. understand this reality and what they're saying in this paper and how this whole thing is put together and works, then you can back yes. engineer that mofo, right? No and, doubt. And figure yes. out what it is that you want to create because we're using their tactics against them. Yes, exactly. Because the tactics have been used against yes. us. It's literally the Wizard of Oz. Yes. There's a little, a little scrawny, old, pervy fuck pulling levers behind a curtain. Yep. Yeah. That's what's yeah. happening. None of it, none of it was mad. I mean, uh, yeah, they, and it's, we, I think what we're, you know, like Dorothy, and we're, you know, we've, spiraled our and that that spiral that's a whole other ball of yarn to unwind that whole story the wizard of oz but right. uh yes. we're unwind we're unwinding the spiral you yes. know and it yes and it we have been we have been duped by a wizard behind a curtain i mean essentially what i what i i think you for me i can basically sum it up in they're creating compartmentalized consciousness they put it into tiny little pens or prisons they limit the frequency put an end to any type of out of the box thinking at all in your spirituality. They throttle your capacity for emotional expression. You're not allowed to feel deeply. You're definitely not allowed to express it. And you can't have these outlandish beliefs. And then boom, what does that do? That puts an end to your creativity and imagination. So when a consciousness is right. imprisoned, it cannot evolve. It cannot grow. It refuses to explore yep. beyond the rigidity of the mental plane. And so you're putting your, you yourself along with the collective though, but you yourself are putting a frequency fence around your own consciousness and that causes fragmentation of your consciousness. So basically your code is being corrupted and that yes, causes in by you. Yes. And that causes <laughs> increasingly deviant psychological behavior and dysfunctions. And if that's what you want to do, that's up to you. But for me personally, I prefer not to. Yep. hundred percent. Absolutely. You did an excellent job of summing it up. I don't need to say anything else. I think I've said <laughs> uh, how, how I feel about it. Um, 
you yeah. know, I say, let's, let's get on the horse. Let's hand, let's just handle business now. Handle okay. Business. Let's just not be all emotional about it. Like, okay, that sucked. All right. Let's just, uh, you know, I'm going to fix it now. Yeah. And so that's our goal. Thank you guys so much for listening. Yes. I am going to, to like fix this little baby up and package it up. Nice. It will be published on anchor which is how we're recording it through an app called anchor, mm -hmm. but I will also put it on the YouTube channel and Becca will put it on her YouTube channel yep. Bobby um, will put it and on we hers. will post it to all of our Facebook. Yep. Yeah. Bobby will put it on hers and we'll all post it in all the groups that we're in to try to get this information out. Um, so we can start changing stuff guys. Yeah. Hopefully this was helpful to you. We, I, I definitely enjoyed doing it and I look forward to our next one. Word. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Lisa. Good night. Bye. Bye.